pleasure to get the um, meat of the meeting rolling. Uh, as several of you know, this is one of the most fun meetings for us because after the schools present, you'll have your opportunity to go, go around the room and interact with the students and learn about all the great things that are happening within Medina City Schools. But to begin the presentation, we are gonna start with Superintendent Aaron Sable. Yes, I'd rather move the teacher. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and meet with all of you uh, each October, uh, especially the food this year. Uh, we were talking in the back. Last year, they had a kid's meal set up and then adult meal, and all the adults were going, I really want the chicken fingers and fries. <laughs> and the kids were going, you know, I can eat salad. So it was nice to all be able to have tacos this year. Um, before I get started, there are a few individuals in the room important to our school district that I want to introduce. Uh, our Board of Education uh, plays a very important role uh, in our decision-making process, uh, as well as the work we do and that you're going to see today to move our district forward uh, as leaders and, and as guides uh, for our district and there are important representatives uh, that are elected by the community and represent our community uh, so i'd like to thank uh, board president becky parkhurst Assistant uh, Vice President Jean Pritchard. <laughs> Board Member Joe Nichols. <laughs> and Board Member Ron Ross uh, for joining us and supporting us today. In addition, we have a few administrators uh, in attendance. Our Treasurer, Dave Chambers. Director of Community Relations, Amy Busby. Our Business Director, Ryan O'Call. Our Director of Technology, Craig Komar. And our Assistant Director of Instruction, Sarah Jackson, who you're gonna hear from in a little bit. We also are fortunate to have a whole slew of our educators, uh, teachers, and students, which you're going to get to personally meet uh, a little bit later today. Um, so I want to thank them for taking time out of their day, uh, which is extremely busy, uh, in order to join us. Um, and they're the ones you're really going to get our district story from. So we used to come, this is my eighth year with my dynasty schools, and we used to come and meet with the chamber, and I'd stand up here and give a very formal presentation about the state of the schools. Um, then we talked about we need to practice what we preach, um, and we totally changed up our presentation, so we're gonna try and keep the formal piece short uh, so we can get you up out of your seats and interacting uh, and visiting with our students and our teachers in the different booths uh, around the room. So today what we're gonna talk about is our deeper learning journey. And last year we talked about our portrait of a bee uh, and, a little, and a little bit about our strategic plan. Uh, so this year I wanna share with you where we have gotten uh, since the implementation and the work that's gone into those tools. But I wanna provide you a little bit of background before that. So as a school district, we work together to develop common goals for our entire district. And those common goals really start with the development of our portrait of the bee. And that's uh, shown in the middle diagram there. And you can see that even better on our district website. What our portrait of a bee is, is it's all the competencies uh, that we want to develop in our students throughout their entire experience in the Medina City Schools. So that's 
from the beginning, if they're participating in Helping Hands Preschool, all the way to when they graduate from Medina High School. These competencies were developed through a committee of approximately 100 people, which included our students, our staff, administrators, uh, community leaders, uh, parents, uh, business owners, leaders within the community. These competencies go beyond the ABCs and 123s, but they go into the soft skills that students need to be successful once they graduate uh, from school. We followed that up with the development of our strategic plan, which is a three to four year strategic plan. So the portrait of a B skills and competencies are woven throughout our strategic plan. And the barcode, uh, if you're able to scan that, will take you to our website uh, where you can get more detailed information about our portrait of a B as well as our strategic plans, because I'm not going to get into those in detail today. Uh, we did last year. I do want to mention, though, that our portrait of a B is our guiding star in everything that we do uh, and is incorporated within our curriculum and curricular decisions. Our strategic plan is something that is constantly altering and changing every three to four years as we work to advance our district. So our goal in our district is we want to be leaders in the state as well as leaders in the country in advancing teaching and learning. Um, schools in general have been very slow to keep up with modern times. They've been archaic. So modernizing our schools and Medina City schools has been a priority. So our goal is to have 21st century teaching and learning occurring in all of our classrooms. So that started with the development of the common goals. And those goals are what I had just shared with you, the development of our portrait of the bee as well as our strategic plan. So again, we did that in collaboration with the entire school community and staff so we're all working in the same direction. The second piece to that plan was empowering our students and staff. And that was a goal, a vision that we took on last year. So we opened up last school year by telling our educators that they had the freedom and flexibility to take risks in their classroom. That's a big deal when so much of what our teachers do is based off of state assessments developed by legislation, which is tied directly to their evaluation. So we're asking our teachers to really take risks in what they're doing to advance the education for our students. At the same time, We've asked our teachers to empower our students, to provide our students more flexibility and opportunities to take their learning where they want their learning or need their learning to go. So we're getting away from notes on the blackboard or on the whiteboard, away from this is the steps of how to solve a problem, and more into we work together to collaborate to solve problems. So it's modeling more of the way we solve problems in the real world, in the business world. The third piece to this is pathways and allowing the flexibility for multiple pathways once we've empowered our students and our staff, recognizing that in order to reach our goals, we're not all going to get to the end goal the same way. It's going to take each of us a different way to get there. Some of us are going to have more of a direct path. 
Some of us are going to be immediately on board and charged and excited for the work that we're doing. Others of us might be a lot more hesitant. And that's okay. The point is that we're all working towards the same goals collaboratively with our different pathways and the arrows pointing in the same direction. And if we get common goals with empowerment and flexibility for different pathways, it's going to allow our district to evolve and modernize our education. And this is the cycle that we're working on. And our vision, our motto for the last eight years has been every student every day. And that's to provide education, 21st century education and learning for every student in our district every single day. And this year, we want to do that through a lens of hope. Uh, and we're really preaching hope with our staff. And we've talked to them about generating hope for our future. And that hope is something that we can create and that we can help evolve in each other. So how full is your hope bucket and being aware of that when you walk into the door each day? Not being afraid to reach out to the educator in the classroom next door and let them know that your hope bucket is low to do the same thing for your students, to be supports for each other, and to be intentional when it comes to the development of the excitement for what we're doing in the future and recognizing when we are having those challenging days and being there for each other. And in order to do this, it takes the support of everybody to hold this lens of hope up. And that's our students, our support staff, our administration, our parents, our teachers, our community, and all of our businesses. Um, so I truly believe that schools are a product of their community and a reflection of their community and vice versa. And it has a lot to do with this model and this collaboration. Uh, and that's the approach we take and the direction that we've been heading in our journey. Before the next part, we're going to talk about assessments and where we're heading with assessments uh, in regards to 21st century learning. But before I do that, be remiss if I didn't mention, and this is not what we're here today for, um, but I do want to make sure everybody is aware that we are on the ballot uh, in November. Uh, we have two issues that are going to be on the ballot, uh, a bond issue as well as an operating levy. Uh, the bond issue uh, is for uh, facilities and construction, um, looking to uh, replace Claggett so we no longer have trailers there, and providing a modern facility uh, for our middle school students, expanding route, um, replacing some stands over the stadium, uh, and doing some other work uh, to some of our other facilities. And then the operating levy is to support, we're not looking at adding new programming, uh, it's money to support the work uh, that you're going to see today, uh, the work that we've been doing uh, the last several years. And it's the first time we've asked for additional dollars uh, in 10 years. So at this time, I'd like to welcome up and introduce uh, Sarah Jackson, our Assistant Director of Instruction, and Kelly Kreiner, who's over here as well. Uh, Kelly is uh, a high school teacher as well as uh, one of our lead teachers with curriculum. Thank you, Mr. Sable. For the time that I have spent in education and the many different initiatives that I have led both at the state level and here with Medina City Schools, 
The work that we are doing within our Deeper Learning Initiative and our Portrait of a Bee is some of the most impactful work that I have been a part of. And I truly feel that you will also see that as you talk to our amazing students that are here today, as well as our teachers that are truly helping to bring forth these opportunities throughout our school district. When we refer to deeper learning, several years ago, our school community came together to really recognize that it's through deeper learning experiences that we can provide our students with the opportunities to develop and practice the competencies that are represented within our portrait of a bee. When our community helped us to develop our portrait of a bee, it really represented the critical skills that we know our students need after they graduate, no matter what path they take once they leave us in Medina City Schools. These are the skills that they will lean on to be uh, prepared for an ever-changing world. As we have continued through our journey and the evolution of our school district and bringing forth these opportunities, we are very excited that this year our journey has taken us to introducing capstone projects within our school district. And capstone projects are kind of a culminating activity that takes place at key transition points throughout an edu a student's educational career to really allow them the opportunity to reflect on how they're developing the competencies, but also to receive feedback and information on how they're using those skills within their deeper learning experiences and their everyday life. Our capstone projects um, occur at fifth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade. And they're transdisciplinary experiences that allow students to pull from not just one content area, but all that they have been a part of within their educational experience in Medina. They really elevate students' voice and choice. And when we talk about deeper learning and we commit to this vision of empowering our students, that's a key part of what we want our students to feel and experience. And these capstone projects are truly driven by students' interests, their passions, so they can see how the skills they're learning with us today are gonna be a part of what they can continue to grow and lean on throughout their, um, throughout their lifetime. As I said, one of the key elements of a capstone is an opportunity for students to really reflect on how they're developing these skills and to receive feedback from our staff to help them to continue to grow in this journey. Capstone projects also include public presentation of what students have learned, the skills that they are developing, which may be something that we call upon our members here today to join us in that journey, so that students have an opportunity to hear from those that are connected to their areas of interest outside of the walls of our classrooms. And as I shared, even though deeper learning happens at every grade level within Medina City Schools, these capstone projects are a formal structure to be able to truly reflect on how we are supporting students in developing these competencies. And at fifth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade, we focus in on certain competencies within our portrait of a bee to truly allow our students to self-reflect and think about how those are growing within their work. So today I am lucky to have Kelly here with us. Kelly has been instrumental in helping us to think about how capstones are evolving, what that work needs to look like to truly be meaningful for our students. Kelly has been leading this initiative at our high school and she's gonna share with you more about what that has looked like this school year. Um, before I turn it over to Kelly, this year we are piloting our capstone project with the intent of scaling up so that all students in fifth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade get to be a part of this journey with us. Hello, it's great to be here, thank you so much. So I just wanted to share a little bit, we're only about a quarter in and it is a pilot, so we've been working on it for over a year, but one of the big things right now is just trying to help students realize that we're serious and that we want them to actually explore who they are and how they impact their community. So that's part of what, what Mr. Sable said about like empowering our students. I think sometimes they're really, um, they want us to tell them what to do even though they say don't tell me what to do. And so we're, you know, it takes a little bit of time to make sure that you know, I'm not just having you check boxes, we're not just jumping the hoops because that's the safer way to go, right? 
So we have been talking about, like we started the first quarter, as we're sitting last year and pulling this together, we said, how do students even, like do they know what their passions are? Do they understand how those passions can impact not just their career choices, but who they want to be years in the future? And that, that's a big deal. So we spent um, a lot of time, more time than I'd actually planned in the, you know, as we're envisioning it, doing pers talking about personal branding, which actually turned out to be a lot of fun. But we, we talked about their passions, and then we got into things that were really concerning them, which are college essays, you know, pulling together their resume. Um, we did a couple elevator talks, and I said, when someone asks you, like, why are you the best person for this job, which a lot of them have already interviewed, how do you answer that? It sounds so easy, but I know you know it's not. So a lot of that already has led to better communication. Um, it's led me to have to pivot a little bit and think about things that we envisioned before we started this pilot. So um, I think one of the reasons I was most excited about this class is I don't mind messy, and this class is very messy, which, which I think fits with, with what we see. Um, the, again, the focus question is how will I use my portrait to be competencies to make an impact in the world around me. That's our end goal. But first we have to figure out who we are and where we want to be, how we, what we want to change. So I just, I did this slide just to sort of give you an idea um, from fifth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade, how that would look in regards to our standards. Like what we need as teachers to make sure that we're doing to recognize what the state requires of our students. So this one is about, um, understanding other people's perspectives. It's worded, if you think about it, like as you're reading a fiction story, but it shows how that transfer of skills works and how we try to address that. So it's determining perspective, it's looking at how people use words, use them wisely. So for example, we were doing, our students do a brag sheet before we write them letters of recommendation. Does anyone have seniors in here right now? So you know, the people who have seniors know, or, or if, you're, if your children, once they've gone through, that brag sheet helps us write this strong letter of recommendation for their college um, application or whatever they might need if they're going in a job search. Um, I've written some for military students who want to go to um, officer school. So on the brag sheet, we've talked about word choice and how you, know, you don't just say good or fine, or one student used the word monotone to describe himself, and I said, I know you're joking. <laughs> and, and I know the student, I had him in 10th grade as well, so I said, I know you're joking, but you know, we're being serious here, what do you mean by that? And he I actually talked about, like, I use a very monotone voice, but there's more to me than my voice, and I said, okay, let's work with that, right? So I said, I'm not sure that would be one of the three words that describe me, <laughs> unless you have a chance to actually have some give and take. So, so it was a great thing for me, coming, being an English teacher, word choice is important, our words matter. So this is just an example. I think sometimes, and I think students even thought, on oh, doing this community project, and, and they just, I think sometimes we just don't realize how important that is. I know you do, but I think for students, they're young, um, they're so powerful, and, and we just want to give them the opportunity to show their power. So the final thing that we, this really just came up recently when we were talking about soft skills um, on their resumes, and we got into, again, something I really hadn't planned, but the idea that, I was trying to describe what soft skills are and why they're not soft. You know, better words. So I started looking for better words. I brought up some Forbes articles. And we we're talking, you know, a lot of different terms we could use. But my goal with students, so then I had them look. I thought, why am I looking? They're supposed to look. Okay. So I had them look. You know how to Google, go look, bring me some articles, let's talk about this. So we started talking about how our interactions with others and our own personalities will determine how we put together our groups and our impact on the community. So we need to play with our strengths, we need some personality tests, um, and we talked about soft skills. We also talked about, we, I struggle with this word too, like areas for improvement, our weaknesses. And sometimes our strengths can be a weakness um, depending on how we use it, and sometimes our weakness can be used as a strength. Again, depending on how we use it, we need to know ourselves. So this class has been um, a lot so far about that mindset, talking about our skills, recognizing our potential as people to impact our community. And I know I've already reached out to a couple of you, I actually spoke to a couple of you today, 
Um, we're really excited to be involved with the community, um, as always. And we're really excited for our seniors to be able to have a lot more control over like these projects. So we're excited to show you how they turn out. So one other opportunity that's very, I think I say exciting 10 times, sorry about that. Um, a really good opportunity that we have at Medina High School as well is the opportunity for our students to shadow career professionals in the field. And Laura Stoffinger is going to talk more about that. Hello everybody, I will be very brief. Um, my name is Laura Stoffinger. I teach business at the high school, accounting, um, an introduction to business. And just recently I partnered with Shana to teach our capstone, I mean our career exploration opportunities course. Um, hearing this speech, which is the first time I've heard it, they really do complement each other um, and are going to provide great opportunities. I do know of one student that's taking career explorations next semester that's in the capstone, so I'm interested to see how that um, vibes together. These are our business partners that we've used already. What our course is, is it's a semester-long course where the first half the students learn employability skills, how to interview, how to build a resume. Um, they're uh, online, they're digital. Um, experience, what it shows about them. And then the second half is we actually place them in a business to complete 40 hours over eight weeks. And we are growing very quickly. And in order for us to grow and keep providing these great experiences for students, we need businesses to partner with us in Medina County. Um, so we are here to talk to you a little bit more about it. When we have the opportunity, I have brought a couple students with us that have experienced this. One student in particular did not know what she wanted to do before taking this course, and this course actually kind of helped her decide on a pathway. So it has been very beneficial to students. Some realize what they don't want to do, which is also beneficial. Um, so if you are looking to help and get people interested in your industry and kind of you know start at a base level, this is a great opportunity for you guys to partner with us and, and get some students in your business to learn a little bit about more what you offer. All right, thank you very much. Okay, now it's time for the best part of the meeting. One, you can burn your calories with the cookie you ate. But two, the students that are here worked really, really hard to be here today and tell you about what they're proud of at their school. So please take this opportunity to go around the room, interact with every table, especially stop at that CEO table. There are amazing opportunities out there for both the students and the businesses in our community. So don't walk out that door, walk around the room. Got it? All right.